In this video, we present the solution to question number 14 for practice exam number four for math 1210. And it's an optimization problem. Suppose that a can is made to contain a thousand pi cubic centimeters of liquid. The reason the pi there is just to make this thing arithmetically simpler to compute for you, especially if you don't have a scientific calculator with you. So before we read the rest of it, let's kind of imagine we have this can. A can just means in this situation, it's a cylinder. Um, the volume of the can is, act, excuse me, the volume of the cylinder is actually provided to us here. So we see the volume is going to equal pi r squared h. And by the constraint given, this volume is going to have to be 1,000 pi. Well, the radius of the circle on top, that's what r is. And h is then measuring the height of this can right here. So suppose that it costs five cents per square centimeter for the metal use on the top and bottom of the can, but it costs 10 cents per cubic centimeter, excuse me, per square centimeter for the metal on the side. So it turns out that, that the, the top and bottom cost a little bit different than the side. And we want to find the exact cost of the cheapest can. So we're trying to minimize costs and therefore cost is going to be our optimizing function. This statement about volume is the constraint here. So the cost, it looks like we're going to get 5 cents times, well, the area of the top plus the area of the bottom. And then we're going to, it'll cost 10 cents for the area of the side. Now, given it's a cylinder, the top and bottom are both circles. So the area of the top and the bottom are actually the same. So we're going to end up with 0 0.05 times 2 times the area of the top plus 10 cents times the area of the side which of course, if you take five cents and times by two, that's 10 cents. So we actually can factor out this 10 cents and we have to figure out the area of the top plus the area of the side. Let's unravel this a little bit more. Well, like I already mentioned, the top is a circle. So the area of the circle is gonna be pi r squared where r again is the radius of the circle here. The side on the other hand, where, what, what is that shape going to be? Well, if you think of it as like the soup label on a can, if you cut it off and flatten it, you're going to get a rectangle for which one of the dimensions is going to be the height. The other dimension will be the circumference of the circle here. So we end up with 2 pi r. And so area of a rectangle is length times width. So you end up with 2 pi r h, like so. So now we have that cost is a function of two variables, r and h. We need to remove one of the variables, and that's where the constraint comes into play. Um, if you take your constraint and divide both sides by pi, we end up with r squared h is equal to 1,000. And then if you divide both sides by r squared, you're going to get h equals 1,000 over r squared. Make that substitution into our cost function right here. So cost is equal to 10 cents times pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 1,000 over r squared, for which we can simplify this thing. I'm going to factor the pi out of this situation here because we don't really need it for a while. You have an r squared. You get 2 times 1,000, which is 2,000. r divided by r squared is going to be 1 over r. But as I have to take the derivative soon, I'm going to write that as r to the negative 1 power. And this is our cost function. To find the optimal cost, we need to take the derivative. Now let's first think about the boundary for a second. The, the radius here could be allowed to go off towards zero. Uh, that would make for a zero volume, so that doesn't quite work. We could allow the height to go off towards zero. That's sort of the other extreme, but that would also make volume equal to zero and it needs to be a thousand pi. So these boundary values don't make any sense. So the optimal solution will not be on the boundary. Um, the optimal solution would have to be at a critical number for which we calculate that using just the usual derivative rules. We're going to get 0.1 pi times 2r plus, I guess it's actually minus 2,000 r to the negative 2. This needs to equal 0. Divide both sides by 0.1 pi. We end up with 2r minus 2,000 r to the negative 2. I'm just going to write this as over r squared now, equals 0. Um, we can move this friend to the other side. So we end up with 2r equals 2,000 over r squared. I'm going to times both sides of the equation by r squared to get 2r cubed equals 2,000. Divide both sides by 2, we get r cubed equals 1,000. And therefore, take the cube root, we get r equals the cube root of 1,000, which turns out to be 10 centimeters. Now, what this tells you, 10 centimeters, this is the optimal dimension for the for our can. The radius should be 10 centimeters. We could use this formula to figure out what the height sh should be if we wanted to. We could plug it in. 10 squared is 100. 1,000 divided by 
uh, 100 is 10. So we want the radius to be 10. We want the height to be 10. That's going to be the minimal cost of our can. But we're actually looking for the cost. We don't have the cost right now. We need to plug this 10 centimeters into our cost function and start simplifying it from there. But be cautious. With an optimization problem, it's not always the case that the optimal solution is a critical number. Sometimes it's the boundary, um, which is why we considered the boundary earlier. Another way to see that this is the minimum cost is to do either the first or second derivative test. Like if we calculate the second derivative of this function and plugged in x equals, or excuse me, r equals 10, we would end up with the second derivative being uh, the second derivative being positive, which therefore this would mean we have a minimum value. We're trying to minimize cost here. So let's plug this into our cost function. The cost equals 0.1 pi times uh, 10 squared, which is 100, plus 2,000 over, in this case, r, which is 10. Which notice, if you take 1,000, 2,000 divided by 10, that's just 200. 200 plus 100 is 300. So you get 0.1 pi times 300. And then 0.1 times 300 will be 30. So we get an answer of 30 pi. What are the units here? Um, because I use cents, right, to do 10 cents, I did 0.1. I'm actually working in dollars here. And so my final answer would then be 30 pi dollars. If you want to write it as cents, you'd have to times it by 100 and get 3,000 pi cents. But 30 dollars is typically the way uh, we would do currency in the United States. So that'll be our final answer. If you want, you could multiply that 30 by pi to get an answer and you round it to two decimal places. That's very appropriate for... Again, if you have a calculator for currency in the United States, uh, but assuming you don't have one, you can leave it exact. You don't have a calculator that it is. You can leave it exact, and so the answer would be 30 pi.